بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and all his family members We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all his companions and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all those who have struggled and strived to bring this deen to us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and our offspring, those to come up to the last of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on the right path. Beloved brothers and sisters, as we had promised, this evening we will be speaking about a very, very important messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we turn the pages of the Quran, we will find that the bulk of the verses in the Quran that discuss prophets and the messengers that were sent discuss the prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. He is mentioned in 124 places in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned his story in so much detail. And one of the surahs where there is great detail is known as Surah Al-Qasas. Al-Qasas meaning the stories. What stories and why is it plural? It's important for us to know that he is the only messenger discussed in the Quran in so many different stages of his life. Starting from the very beginning when he was born and later on as he grew up and thereafter, when he left this, the area that he had grown up in for a certain reason, inshallah, we will come to that this evening. And he went away and what happened in Madian, when he went to Madian. And thereafter, when he came back and how he was sent to Fir'aun and the message to the Pharaoh or Fir'aun. In the Arabic language, we say Fir'aun. In English, we say Pharaoh. And thereafter the response and so on and after they were successful and victorious over the Pharaoh what happened between him and his own people Banu Israel so all this is mentioned and these are the different stages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about so we will inshallah concentrate on Surah Al-Qasas and we will also take verses from other places in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the tyrant of the time the one who used to say Ana rabbukumul a'la I am your God. I am the highest deity that you could ever have. This was the statement of the Pharaoh. He used to say, I am the highest deity that you have. Pharaoh told all his chiefs that, oh, my chiefs, I don't know of any God for you people besides me. Astaghfirullah. Look at how he was. He knew that he's a human being. He knew he had the same needs of nature that everyone else had. And he knew that he was also prone to sickness and so on. But at the same time, he was too haughty, very, very high. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says This is a way of commencing a surah These surahs that have these separated letters Were all revealed in Mecca Besides the first two all of them were revealed in Makkah al Mukarramah because there, there were the kuffar of Quraysh who were extremely eloquent and they thought that their language skills were so high that they, nobody could come with something better than theirs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to send verses that nobody knows the meaning of, but it drew their attention. Subhanallah. And they wanted to know it. And this is why we are taught, Ista'thar Allahu bihi fi ilmih. Only Allah knows exactly what the meaning of those separated letters are. They are known as Hurufun Muqatta'ah, which means separated letters. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this and he starts the surah in this way. So this surah was revealed in Makkah al Mukarramah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making mention of this in so much detail. He says, these are the verses of the book, very clear cut, clear cut the book and clear cut the verses. Then Allah says, we are going to recite unto you. We are going to relate unto you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the story of Moses and Pharaoh with truth. Because there might be other versions that may come later on. There were people of the book who brought stories of Moses, may peace be upon him and Pharaoh. But they had all different versions. Whereas the Quran came before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard these stories from anyone else. The Quran had already come with these verses. And Allah says that is the accurate version of the story between Moses and Pharaoh. It is related in the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. One might ask why the great detail? Why is it that there is so much detail? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we will all need to learn lessons from the story and derive lessons and guarantize them from the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all the way to this day and right up to the end of time. There will always be a force that is a devilish force, that is a tyrant, that is very high and haughty, that may be in authority. And on the other hand, you will have a Moses. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, every nation, Every people have had a Moses, subhanallah. Allah has sent a Musa to all the people. There was always one who was calling them towards goodness. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in my case, it is Abu Jahl. Which means Abu Jahl was the one who was the Fir'aun. And I was the one who was the Moses, subhanallah. Look at how the explanation is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us both forces. The force that calls towards goodness and the force that fights anybody who calls towards goodness. May we ask ourselves the question, which category do we fall in? Do we call people towards goodness or do we fight those who call us towards goodness? First question, subhanallah. So we learn this lesson from the surah. Which side are we on? Let us become absolutely conscious of this at all times. When someone calls us towards goodness, do we get angry and upset? If that is the case, where do we belong? Allahu Akbar. And when we see evil, do we, do we at least feel in our hearts that this is wrong? Or do we also cheer it along and become part of it? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna fir'auna ala fil ardi wa ja'ala ahlaha shia'a Indeed, Fir'aun. He was very haughty on earth. He thought himself to be something very high and very great. He thought that he was the big boss. He was the one who decided. In fact, he said, I am the God. You worship me and that's it. So Allah says, Ja'ala ahlaha shia'an. On the land, he made the people on the land different groups. He classified them. So he was right at the top. Then he had his chiefs. They all worshipped him those chiefs of his and he allowed them to get close and they helped him sometimes in decision making and so on. He had meetings with them at times and he allowed them to ask him questions. Now, if he was a God, why would he need to consult? Allahu Akbar. Why would he need to consult? So it goes to prove that he knew for a fact that he's not at the top. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter, he had other categories. There were those who worshipped him, whom he enslaved. So they were his slaves and worshippers. Astaghfirullah. They considered him a God and they slaved for him. And then there were those who served him, who were professional in a certain way where he needed them, such as the magicians who came later on, who were worried about what they would earn if they could benefit him in one way or another. It is reported and this is something that is common sense. Some of the ulama have spoken about the common sense behind this statement that Fir'aun says he's the God being utterly unacceptable. Even within, within his, himself. If we study it, later on when he needed to face Musa alayhi salam, he wanted to bring magic. If he was the God, couldn't he bring it himself? But he had to call on magicians. So it goes to show, he is so silly on one hand, he's telling the same magicians, I'm your God. And the other hand he's saying, hang on, we need to face the man. Bring up whatever you people have. 
Why would he do that? So look at how high the man is, but his brain is knocked. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Sometimes when we think we know too much in reality, our brain becomes covered. And then we start sounding like a fool. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We always need to draw lesson and inspiration from revelation. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals wahi. Wahi means revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no ways that the Quran can be wrong. Not even a droplet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us lesson. So Allah says, He divided His people. And then He had those who were slaves who did not worship Him. But they were slaves. And they knew that this one is not our God. They were part of Banu Israel, the children of Yaqub, the children of Jacob. And we had these Egyptians who were on this side, Fir'aun's side. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all, really. Then we had those who were outright enemies. Anyone who defied Fir'aun in any way, even prior to their birth, he got rid of them. Which means if he felt there is a defiance against me, within a fetus before it is actually given birth to, he made sure as soon as it came, it was destroyed. Allahu Akbar. This policy up to this day, it lasts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing these verses to us to learn a lesson. Remember, I might not be able to currentize absolutely every verse, but you can do that within your mind, within your heart. You know how it will fit into our condition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and open our minds and hearts. Remember, if you read the story again and again and again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your understanding. It's important. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُذَبِّحُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَيَسْتَحِي نِسَاءَهُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Some of them, he considered them slaves. The weaker ones, he took them as slaves. And he used to slaughter their boys. A little boy was born, cut and thrown out. And he used to allow the little girls to live. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we want to give our favor to those who have been downtrodden on earth, those who are the weak on earth, those who are downtrodden, we want to bestow our favor upon them and make them the leaders, and we want to make them the heirs of whatever is on the earth so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we look at that time there were two forces one was that which claimed to be god and the other was the downtrodden banu israel the children of israel meaning the children of yaqub the prophet jacob may peace be upon him he was called israel and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we wanted to give our favor to these who were downtrodden and make them a imma and leaders bring them up and let them inherit whatever came from this particular side and even more now the lesson for all of us those who think they are haughty their days are numbered their days are numbered they cannot continue in that oppression forever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it stop and one day there will be those whom they considered low will be above them this is the plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is why we as Muslimin are taught to be good to one another. You never know when the tables can turn. Really. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُمَكِّنَ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And we want to establish them on earth. Who? Those who were downtrodden for so many years. We want to establish them on earth. وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ and we want to show Fir'aun and Haman and the others, the cronies that he had with him, that they would actually lose what they feared most. They would lose it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when at that particular stage, Fir'aun had seen a dream according to one of the narrations. And in his dream, he had seen a light that had come and it destroyed all the homes besides the homes of the children of Israel, the children of the Prophet Jacob or Banu Israel. We will call them Banu Israel. And it bothered him. So he sought its interpretation. He gathered some people and the people who were fortune tellers and magicians and what have you and those whom he wanted. And he asked them, what is the meaning of my dream? But moments ago you were saying you were God. Allahu Akbar. That means you now know that you even need an interpretation. 
So they told him this means that there's going to be someone who's going to come, a boy, who will be coming up, one boy, one man from Banu Israel, who will take away absolutely everything that you have. And he will uproot you totally and throw you onto the side. And you will be destroyed at his hands, totally. Now he was worried. He said, what do you mean? I will slaughter all the boys from today onwards. So he issued an instruction. Anyone who finds any woman of Banu Israel expecting, you just make sure that she is under surveillance. And once she delivers, we take the child and next thing throw into the furnace or do whatever, expose, execute, whatever they had to do, they did. And it is reported this happened every alternate year because this is how he was informed. Now one might ask, there was Harun alayhi salam. He was slightly older than Musa alayhi salam according to some narrations. He was born either at the time prior to these children being slaughtered or during the year, every other year when they were not slaughtering, when they were not executing little babies. So he was born. But at that time, the mother of Musa alayhi salam was expecting him. She conceived. No one knew. And as she got worried, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired her with revelation. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always send a reminder to a tyrant somehow, even if it's one man, but a reminder to a tyrant. And even we are talking here on a small scale. If there's oppression within the home, there will always be a reminder. Oppression within the community, there will be reminders. Oppression within a country, oppression on an international scale, there will always be reminders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Clean cut, clear cut. And if the arrogance makes us not come back down to the ground, we've had it. We will only last a little bit and thereafter there is destruction. May Allah safeguard us. And the reason I say this is because every one of us needs to ask ourselves the question, which side do we fall on at every moment in our lives? Some people are Fir'auns in their own homes. The way they treat their wives, the way they... Well, I don't know if we can call the women Fir'aunas. But at the same time, sometimes... There are people in the homes who terrorize their own family members. The family members are frightened of them. A child, sometimes the parents are scared of the child. Why? We need to understand the rights of our parents, our mothers especially. And we need to know that we will serve them because this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had asked us. This is what he'd asked us. And this is how inshallah we will be earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, solve your problems and your matters. Sometimes it applies in a workplace where there's a certain person who's a Fir'aun terrorizing everybody else, everyone, proper Pharaoh. That won't last long. Wallahi, it won't come with goodness. They will taste the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either in their health, in their wealth, or in their family members, or something to do with them. Sometimes you have people, and we've seen huge people, people who are in great authority on the globe, and suddenly one newspaper article and they are destroyed. They've got to resign and come back and out and everything is finished. And that possibly is because they've oppressed someone somewhere down the line. And they didn't repent from it. Possibility. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from oppressing others and from being oppressed as well. And may he not punish us. So this Fir'aun, as we know, he began to do this action and he used to allow the girls to live. The little boys used to be killed. And now the mother, as she was fearing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, she succeeded, she managed to cover until birth. And she gave birth. Now worried because the child will start crying. The people around might hear and so on. Allah says, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِي فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمِّ وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي إِنَّا رَادُّوهُ إِلَيْكِ وَجَاعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Allah says, we inspired the mother of Musa alayhi salam. Now this inspiration is not revelation as in the same that came to the prophets. But it is a strong inspiration. Where a person knows almost certainly they have that yaqeen. And they are inspired. In this case, inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with certainty. So what was the inspiration? Breastfeed the child. Continue breastfeeding the child. When you fear... 
for the child either because of whatever reason creates that fear maybe the child might cry or you are fearing someone might come and take the child and because it is a family of Banu Israel what happened is they would immediately take the child into execution and they would destroy the child so if you fear then place the child in the river Nile in a little box a little wooden box either made of reeds or made of little bamboo we don't know exactly what it's made of either a basket or a box and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the mother to place the child and to put the child into the Nile and Allah says don't worry and don't be sad so Allah instructed her saying you breastfeed him and if you are fearing then you put him into the Nile in this specific manner and then Allah says and do not worry and do not be sad not at all we will indeed return him to you we will return him to you at a specific stage and we will make him from amongst those whom we will send with a message so she knew now which mother would not be feeling in her heart a worry and a concern who would ever take their child and say right this is a lake you know the Nile is huge even if it's a little lake around here so right let's just test this just what happened to the prophet Moses put your child in waterproof little you know box which is completely sealed with oxygen and everything and leave it there and stand and wait would anyone do that no not at all not even they wouldn't even think of it and Allah says now we inspired her to do this now this has to have been solid powerful inspiration because without it that wouldn't have happened so she came she prepared the box and she placed the child by the will of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how he guided how he guided this this little mashallah basket if we call it or a wooden box if we call it imagine any one of us who's been to Egypt and seen the Nile huge river with lots of people living all over the show imagine it actually went it was gliding it it was floating and nobody picked it up not at all and where did it land it landed specifically at a spot designated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this shows that Allah is in control of absolutely everything you know we spoke about the dua of the prophet Noah Bismillahi majreha wa mursaha in the name of Allah it will start and in the name of Allah it will stop this thing started in the name of Allah and it stopped in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It lodged itself on the bank right at the doorstep of Fir'aun's own house. Now I guess most probably it's not from a kitab or anything but we are just trying to visualize it. If you tried to get to Fir'aun's palace it would probably be difficult on land. You would have to pass so many checkpoints or what have you. But when you came from the sea it went straight there and it landed in his backyard straight there subhanallah and they didn't have children Fir'aun was not blessed with kids one might ask well which one of the pharaohs was it and all that we don't need to know whether it was Ramses the second or not we don't really need to know if it was not explained to us by the Prophet وسلم, or by the Quran we don't need to know it it is not of essence so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter says Allahu Akbar فَالْتَقَطَهُ it was picked up by the wife of Fir'aun, family of Fir'aun. Without knowing that this is going to be a point and a source of enmity and sadness for the Pharaoh. So she didn't know. Now Musa alayhi salam for your information was dark in complexion. He was dark in complexion according to what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says. And later on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa describes him as a well-built, solid, strong man with a beard. And he was dark in complexion. Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Very strong. You can imagine he grew up in the, Fir'aun, in the Fir'aunic palace, so to speak. In the early stages of his life, probably being fed, mashallah. And he was a big man. Subhan powerful, powerful person. We'll come to see that a little bit later. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about him as helpless as he was at this stage. But he was being protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing anybody can do to you or your child except by the will of Allah. Allah is in control. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all and give us a deep understanding. 
So she picked the child up. And Allah says, Inna fir'awna wa hamana wa junoodahuma kanu khati'een. Indeed, Fir'aun and Haman. Haman was one of his closest ADs. And Allah says, the armies belonging to the two of them were definitely wrong. Imagine a superpower, a massive force who called himself God. Who called himself God. He made the decisions. And Allah says, we're going to send you one man. One man. Allahu Akbar. And here is the little child. Nobody knows. They don't know. And Allahu Akbar. It's just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his will. Now the child comes picked up by the wife. Fir'aun is skeptical, but he wants to make his wife happy because they had no children. So she looks and says, Oh, what a wonderful baby. The wife of Fir'aun says, Oh, this is the coolness of my eyes and yours. Look a child, as though it's God sent. We don't have children. Maybe we will be able to benefit from this child and even consider him our own son. Look at this. Had he had so many children, this wouldn't have happened. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept it a specific way because Allah's plan was already there in place from a long, long time before. Allah gives us a chance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how many chances he's going to give us. But we don't know. So we'd better make most of the chances we have at hand. Because that's what we know are there or is there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to seize the opportunities to turn to him. And not to wait until it is too late. So Fir'aun was very skeptical and so on. You know it is reported. It, it is a Hebrew narration. It is reported that Fir'aun. We have this narration that we've heard. We report, it is reported that Fir'aun wanted to test the child because he was very skeptical. So he looked at the child after a little while, after some time, and he says, let us put something that children would run towards or would go towards, would crawl towards on one side, and the fire is on the other side. If this child goes towards that which the children go towards normally, then this child is like every other child and we will have to execute the child. And if the child goes towards the fire and picks up the little piece of coal, then that means this child here really won't be able to do any harm because it doesn't know what is right from wrong from this age. And it, it doesn't even have that common sense. In that case, we will keep the child. So it is reported, it is said by the historians that Musa alayhi salam, when he was put down, he crawled towards, and this was a little bit later on, he crawled towards the coal and picked it up. And this is how he burnt himself. And this is why he had a stutter later on. But Allah knows whether that is actually accurate or not. We've mentioned it because later on he did have a stutter and he did have some form of a knot which pr prevented him from being so eloquent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when the child was picked up, now the child began to cry for milk. So now they're trying to breastfeed. Any woman who'd given birth, they tried the child to suckle. But the child refused. One refusing to refuse they brought whoever they could refuse everyone is refusing Allahu Akbar they're all refusing to suckle meaning he is refusing from them and they're all trying in their own beautiful ways and everybody came what an honor they could have made a lot of money from the Pharaoh yes the people around Fir'aun they wanted to make a lot of merchandise from him and they wanted to be close to him so that they could also have you know they had a hierarchy system the pyramid scheme the pyramid system right at the top there's one only one fits anyway and as they grow, as they go lower, there are more and more people in those ranks. So this is how they operated. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks so beautifully about what happened. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We sent the sister of Musa alayhi salam to go into the palace. She went into the palace and found that they are looking for someone to breastfeed the child. She says, hang on, I know someone who is such a good mother. She will breastfeed in such a way that this child will definitely drink. They said, no, 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 bring her, bring her straight away. Bring her. Look how Allah's plan is. Allah told his mother, don't worry, put him down. We're going to return him to you very soon. He'll come back. Don't worry. Moments had to pass. She was there in the palace and subhanallah, she sat and he began to suckle. 
They were shocked. They were all shocked. So Fir'aun is asking her, How is he suckling from you? Who are you? Now she didn't want to lie. And at the same time, had she told the truth, it was the end of all of them. So she says, Look, I have some very sweet milk. And no child has ever refused my breasts. Not at all. So she avoided the question and she answered in a beautiful way. And this child began to suckle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We returned him to his mother in order to for him to be the coolness of her eyes. And so that she would not be sad. And so that she would know that the promise of Allah is definitely true. Now how many of us, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, you do good deeds, Allah will reward you. But we do good deeds and then we say, I'm still suffering in life. Why do we lose hope? How many of us, we do good deeds and we say we're still suffering? No, remember, Wa'dallahi haqq. Allah's promise is the truth. It will come when the time is right. Don't worry. Sometimes we have to also let go. I want to spend a moment speaking to those who've lost their children at an early age. Don't worry. A day will come when Allah will unite you with those children in the Akhirah. We've not lost them for good. We're all going. We're all going in one direction. Everybody's heading in one direction. Nobody's telling me I'm going closer to birth. You know? This is why they say, how old are you? They don't say, how young are you? Allahu Akbar. Because you're getting older. And then you say, I'm 21 years old. You don't say, I'm 21 years young. Because you know you're getting older and older. Allahu Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells this to us, that he made sure his promise was definitely true. And she was very, very happy. And now let me quickly explain to you what was happening there. She was escorted. She was receiving a stipend for what she was doing. She was being looked after. They were all being nourished. They were all being fed. Everything free of charge on the house, so to speak. Everything. And Fir'aun, he's excited because the wife is carrying the baby and she's smiling and so happy. And he's just happy to see her happy. Allahu Akbar. And this mother, there are two, two reports, two interpretations. She either took the child away to breastfeed and used to bring the child back regularly or she used to come regularly to breastfeed. Either way, it's not very important. What we need to know is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned Musa alayhi salam to the mother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a, a lesson from this. Remember whenever parents are separated from their children, there will come a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unite them. By hook or crook. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors and to have mercy on us all. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he grew in the home and as he grew a little bit older, he was looked after so well. You can imagine being brought up, not even equivalent to a presidential home. No, something beyond that. Someone saying, I am God. I am God. And Musa alayhi salam was brought up and Allah says, when he grew to a certain age, when he grew to a certain age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he uses the word ashud, he got to a certain peak. And Allah says, we granted him hukman wa ilman. Hukman meaning the ability to distinguish between what is right and wrong, that wisdom, that authority, that understanding and knowledge as well over and above that. And Allah says, this is how we recompense those who do good. Now those who did good, Allahu Akbar. The mother of Musa alayhi salam did good by obeying the instructions of Allah. And Musa alayhi salam himself being young, he had grown up firmly believing in his heart that this man here is not God and he's not even a part of God and he is nothing but a normal human being and he was intact within. He already knew who he was. He knew his true identity and he always worshipped the one and only creator. In the face of all this adversity and in the face of being, of living within an environment that constantly reminded one of 
this person claiming to be God, he still maintained that belief of his and it was intact. This is the reward of Allah. So with us as well, no matter what environment we go into, our deen comes first. And let's make sure that nothing will shake our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing at all. And we need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sacrifice in that regard as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَدَخَلَ الْمَدِينَةَ عَلَى حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا رَجُلَيْنِ يَقْتَتِلَانِ He entered the city. Now he never used to go there often because he was from the elite considered. But when he entered the city, people would notice him immediately. So he went at a time when everyone was resting. Reported in the afternoon when they were resting, he came out. And he noticed two people fighting. This was from Banu Israel, the one. And the other one was from the people of Fir'aun who considered Fir'aun a god and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the power of this young man, he was still young. فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَىٰ فَقَضَىٰ عَلَيْهِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Musa alayhi salam went a little bit further and gave this man one blow. And this man was dead. He died. Imagine one blow. Look at how powerful this man must have been. Allahu Akbar. Now to determine your power and mine, let's not go blowing people inshallah. But look at how powerful Musa alayhi salam was. One blow, he did not intend to do anything more than fixing this man and trying to teach him a lesson. Hey, don't mess. But this went beyond what he had intended and it was unintentional completely. As soon as he saw this man drop dead, he says, هذا من عمل الشيطان إنه عدو مضل مبين This is from Shaitan's handiwork. Remember we said blame Shaitan? Yes. This is from Shaitan's handiwork. The devil has done this. The devil is an outright enemy. He leads astray. Clearly, he is an outright enemy. So he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him. Allahu Akbar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. But there's a problem. Because now he's living in a little bit of fear. No one knows besides one man that he has done this, he went back. No one seen it. Everyone was resting. And what happened? Musa alayhi salam, the following day, he decided, let's go back into the city and see what's happening. So he went back the following day. And the next day, he seen two people fight again. And when he seen two people fight again, he noticed that the one who was from his people was the same man who was fighting yesterday. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا أَرَادَ أَن يَبْطِشَ بِالَّذِي هُوَ عَدُوٌ لَهُمَا قَالَ يَا مُوسَىٰ Allahu Akbar When Musa alayhi salam wanted to go forth in order to deal with the crisis in a similar manner this man says Oh Moses, Oh Musa أَتُرِيدُ أَن تَقْتُلَنِي كَمَا قَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا بِالْأَمْسِ Do you want to kill me in a similar manner that you killed that man yesterday? Now everybody heard Everybody heard, cat is out of the bag. Oh Musa, you want to kill me just like you killed that man yesterday? Allahu Akbar. And he continued to say, إِن تُرِيدُ إِلَّا أَن تَكُونَ جَبَّارًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا تُرِيدُ أَن تَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُسْلِحِينَ You only want to be a Jabbar. A Jabbar means a powerful tyrant. A tyrant, that's the right translation. In this particular context, context, when it's referring to a human being, it would mean it's a tyrant, one who has killed more than two people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْعَىٰ A man from the inner part of the city came running to Musa alayhi salam. He says, يَا مُوسَىٰ إِنَّ الْمَلَأَ يَأْتَمِرُونَ بِكَ O Moses, O Musa alayhi salam, the chiefs, these big, big people, they are planning against you now. لِيَقْتُلُوكَ In order to kill you. They want to now kill you. فَخْرُجُ So please leave this city. Just go away and abscond. Leave now. 
Inni laka minan nasihin. I am definitely someone who's genuine. I have a genuine feeling for you. I'm advising you with sincerity. Nasiha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبْ قَالَ رَبِّ نَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ So he left immediately. He didn't have time to prepare for this leaving. Not at all. Because Allah says, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا As soon as he was given this advice, he left. And he was gone out, walking out. Remember, he had not gone anywhere before this. So he didn't even know the roads very well. He just started walking. And he walked, it is reported, until his shoes were now worn completely and he had got somewhere. So imagine what distance he must have covered. فَلَمَّا تَوَجَّهَ تِلْقَاءَ مَدْيَنَ قَالَ عَسَى رَبِّي أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ When he walked towards Madian, when he faced Madian, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him. Praying that, Ya Allah, guide me to the path. Guide me towards some goodness on this path. And Allah says, وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَا أَمَدِيًا وَجَدَ عَلَيْهِ أُمَّةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ يَسْقُونَ When he got to the, the well or the water of Madian, the place where they used to make their flocks drink from, the people of Madian, he saw this and he rested for a while. He'd seen everyone is making their flock drink water. وَوَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمُ امْرَأَتَيْنِ تَذُودَانِ قَالَ مَا خَطُبُكُمَا He saw two women as well. From all the men who were making their sheep drink, he'd seen two women. And those women, they were slightly behind. They were at the back. They were not in the rush of all the men. So he asked them, he looked at them and he says, What is it with the two of you? قَالَتَا لَا نَسْقِي حَتَّى يُصْدِرَ الْرِعَاءُ وَأَبُؤُنَا شَيْخٌ كَبِيرٌ Look at how they answered. Look at how they answered. They said, look, we are not going to go and let our sheep drink or our flock drink until these people go back. And our father is an elderly man. Why did they add the second part of the statement? He didn't ask them, is your father old or young? Because primarily it's a man's job. So before he develops any thoughts, they thought, let's clarify it to say, look, the reason why we as women are standing here with these sheep and not the men of our house, because our father is very old. So here we've learned also, subhanallah, the role of a male in the home. And in the case where it is not being fulfilled for some reason of this nature, here you have an answer that is given by these women saying this is why we are now fulfilling it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. So he decided, okay, you people can sit down. Let me do something. He went, he got some buckets of water and he let all this flock drink. All of them, he did it himself. And they, they took their flock and they went home. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in a beautiful way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَقَى لَهُمَا ثُمَّ تَوَلَّا إِلَى الظِّلْ فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ He had made these or this flock drink of the two women. And then he reclined in the shade and he made a dua to Allah saying, Oh Allah, I am in need of any goodness that you send in my direction. I'm in need of goodness. I need something now. I need your help, Ya Allah. Obviously he needs a home, he needs a place, he needs food, he needs clothing, he needs so many things. He's a stranger there, people don't know him and at the same time, he needs shelter. And as he's making this dua, he notices Something. Allah says, Subhanallah. فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءَ One of the two women who were there moments ago, whom he had helped, is walking back. In a very modest way, she's walking back. Now what did she want? She came all the way to him and she says, 
إن أبي يدعوك ليجزيك أجر ما سقيت لنا My father is calling you in order to give you a reward for what you did for us in that you made our flock drink. So my father would like to see you. Allahu Akbar. So this, he knew immediately, I made a dua to Allah. There's something now coming in my direction. Goodness. So he went. Now it is reported, it is reported that she was of such a modest level and he was even higher than her. That he instructed her, it is said, Allahu A'lam, that look your home, I don't know where it is, but you walk behind me and guide me left or right and I'll walk in front of you. Just so that his eyes did not gaze around here and there. Musa alayhi salam. And what happened as a result, she knew this man is very pure. He is honest. Another thing is he's very, very hard working because we'd seen the work he did and he was stronger than all these men. We finished so quick today. And that's why when we went back, our father asked us, how come you'd finish so quickly? And then they had told the story and he said, go back and call this man and let's give him something in return. He can't just do that for free. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is reported by some of the historians that this man was Shu'aib alayhi salam. And this was Madian. This was also a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Madian. This is what is reported. Obviously, this is not in the Quran. No, is it in the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? But the ulama and the historians from amongst the Muslimin as well are of the opinion, the bulk of them, that this was Shuaib alayhi salatu wasallam in Madian. So Musa alayhi salam goes there and he narrates the stories. What stories? How he was born and what happened and who Fir'aun is and what he does and what he did and so on and why he had to come. And when he heard the stories, he says, "La takhaf, don't fear, Najota, you have been saved." You have been saved from those, from the people who are oppressors. You've been saved from these oppressors. Don't worry, come. So one of the young girls tells the father, قَالَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا يَا أَبَتِ اسْتَأْجِرْهُ إِنَّ خَيْرَ مَنِ اسْتَأْجَرْتَ الْقَوِيُّ الْأَمِينَ One of the young girls tells the father, Oh my father, why don't you employ him? It is definitely best to employ someone who is strong and honest, hardworking and honest. And these two qualities to this day, if you want to employ someone who has these two qualities, your business will flourish by the will of Allah. If you have someone who's absolutely honest, but they're lazy, they're not hardworking. What happens? Your business slides. MashaAllah, the youngsters of today, come 11 o'clock, they're still snoring. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Sometimes I sit and I think, you know, we're going to have, nowadays we say eight to five. Soon it's going to be one to eight. Because the youngsters just don't get up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. And if you have someone who's very, very hardworking, but he's not honest, what happens? It's a hole in the bucket, mashallah. As you're carrying it, it's releasing. So you're carrying it because you're very powerful, but you're just letting it drop. As it's going, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. This man was honest and hardworking at the same time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Musa alayhi salam was told by this man, Shu'aib alayhi salam, Inni uridu an unkihaka ihdabna tayyahatayni ala an ta'jurani thamaniya hijaj. فَإِنْ أَتْمَمْتَ عَشْرًا فَمِنْ عِنْدِكَ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَشُقَّ عَلَيْكَ سَتَجِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Shu'aib tells this man, I want to get you married to one of my two daughters here. On condition that you serve me for eight years. You work for me for eight years. Please, let's not get ideas here. You don't tell your son-in-law, work for me for eight years. This we are talking of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent as a blessing to Musa alayhi salam in the time of his need. And there was nothing wrong with it. And even up to this day, if someone really tells you that, and that's what they want from you, well, that's their condition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us people who make easy marriage and not difficult. 
Whenever there is marriage, the hadith of Prophet ﷺ says, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيدٌ If someone comes to you with a proposal, whom you are satisfied with their level of deen and character, then get them married. If you are going to hinder it, there will be great corruption on earth and vice. So don't hinder. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, inshaAllah, the understanding and inshallah the ability to distinguish between what is beneficial for us and what is detrimental so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he says you work for me eight years and if you want to complete ten whole years then that is from your own goodness and inshallah you will find me being a person who is also good inshallah you know like the employer telling the employee and vice versa to say don't worry i will also be good to you you also you work properly inshallah and we have a good relation and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give too much detail of how the working went but what we do know for sure is he was now a shepherd and he had a flock and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trained him and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says through the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma min nabiyyin illa wa ra'al ghanama. I think I mentioned this hadith at the beginning that every nabi of Allah has been at some stage a shepherd where Allah has tested them and trained them through animals because the amount of patience you need with animals is far more. So now when you are sent to human beings to speak to them, it will be much easier for you to deal with human beings after you've been dealing with animals who couldn't even understand your language. So Musa alayhi salam received this training for 10 whole years. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions to us that from the two, he had served the longer and the better the one which was more complete and after that Musa alayhi salatu was salam he got married mashallah he was very happy he took his wife and now he wanted to go something within him told him I need to go back home to see my folks and so on and this was the opening of a whole new chapter in the life of Musa alayhi salam inshallah tomorrow we have an appointment with that until we meet again